is happening in this scenario of Gaza war starting from Afghanistan which had nothing to do with 9/11 then Iraq then Syria then Libya and then through Saudi the Yemeni war fight has started by Hamas attacking and Israel responding it is the US who wants to drag Iran and the China bloc into this conflict even hospitals and schools and the homes are not safe this region was going out of the american control and into the chinese control the next most likely front is pakistan india the petro dollar payments are also being shifted to other currencies opec is going to shift the methodology of oil payment whenever us economy is about to sink a global military crisis would happen assalam alaikum this is asad jafri and uh, i welcome you in economics the new war front and with me is uh, kevan anwar thank you very much for joining us uh, in today's episode we will talk about the recent issue of uh, this war in gaza and palestine and uh, before starting today's program i would like to remind that uh, uh, about one and a half years ago we talked about russia and ukraine war conflict and in our opinion uh, at that time uh in our opinion uh, that wa- war could have expanded to uh, towards the middle east as well so now when this war started about 2 weeks ago you can say uh, many of our friends they are taking it in a very limited context that uh, this is something done by hamas and in reaction israeli forces are reacting and this is a l- limited or localized scenario so this is very important to place ourselves as well that why we are doing uh, this program and why we want our viewers uh, our listeners uh, to understand that what is our con- context actually in uh, spreading this information uh, is it just just a news program uh, or uh, is there any vision or special purpose to unveil the realities behind the scenes so uh, uh, in our previous episodes we uh, talked lot about this uh, subject of uh, russia ukraine war and uh, we even uh, linked it uh, very clearly with the new blocks of the uh, world like china block and us block and we also placed pakistan that pakistan uh, is between the two blocks and uh, ev- both sides are tangling pakistan uh, to come towards them but finally uh, in this situation we will see now uh, what is happening uh, in this scenario of uh, gaza war uh, but before that let's take a quick recap of our previous uh, episodes and what we delivered to you just for a quick reminder lekin economic power nahi hai ki wo america aur nato ko head on le le aur stand alone head on le le और आप देखें कि जिस कॉन्फिडेंस के साथ उन्होंने इस फ्रंट को खोला है और भरपूर सेंक्शंस जो कि एक्सपेक्टेड भी थी लेकिन उस सिनारी को सामने रखते हुए भी रूस ने जो कदम उठाया है तो इस चीज़ से ये चीज़ समझ में ज़रूर आती है कि रूस शायद इसमें अकेला नहीं है और रूस को जो कॉन्फिडेंस है वो इट सीम्स के वो चाइना की कॉन्फिड के पीछे या इस कॉन्फ्लिक्ट की एक बिगर पिक्चर है और वो वो आ, वो आप कह लें कि द न्यू ग्रेट गेम है जो अब आप कह लें कि फॉर द लास्ट फ्यू डेकेड्स वो बिल्डअप हुई है और वो ग्रेट गेम जो है वो बेसिकली दो नई सुपर पावर्स या एक एग्जिस्टिंग और एक नई इमर्जिंग सुपर पावर यानी कि यू और चाइना की है तो ये जो ग्रेट गेम है इट इज़ ऑल्सो इन प्ले तो आप रशिया यूक्रेन का जो कॉन्फ्लिक्ट है उसको बिगर पिक्चर में जब प्लेस करते हैं तो वहाँ पे आपको चाइना और यूएस इन कॉन्फ्रेंटेशन नज़र आते हैं लेकिन इसमें इंटरेस्टिंगली जो अमेरिका की इकोनॉमी की ग्रोथ रही है 2021 में वो तकरीबन कोई 6 परसेंट से थोड़ी कम रही है वेयर एज चाइना हैज़ ग्रोन ओवर एट तो जो समझने वाले हैं वो जब इसको इसका एनालिसिस करते हैं और वो जो ट्रेंड देखते हैं तो वो उनको नज़र आता है कि चंद सालों में चाइना विल सरपास यूएस एंड इट विल बिकम वर्ल्ड्स नंबर वन इकोनॉमी तो देखें अमेरिका को अपनी जो लीडिंग पोजीशन है ना वो कॉम्प्रोमाइज़ होती हुई नज़र आ रही है 
دوسرا اوبیسلی چائنا ایک ملٹری پاور بھی بن رہا ہے کیونکہ اب کے دور میں اکنامک پاور جس کے پاس ہے تو اس کے پاس ایک سبسٹینشل ملٹری پاور بھی موجود ہے اور اس کا جیو پولیٹیکل ایک انفلوئنس بھی ہوتا ہے تو اس جنگ کو میرے خیال میں بگر پکچر میں پلیس کرنا ضروری ہے کہ روس جو ہے وہ اتنا بڑا سٹیپ اسٹینڈ الون نہیں لے سکتا اس کو کوئی نہ کوئی اشورنسز اور گارنٹیز ہیں جو اس کے پیچھے ہیں جو کہ اس کے کانفیڈنس میں بھی ریفلیکٹ ہو رہی ہے اس کی ون بیلٹ ون روڈ انیشیٹو اور وہ اپنے جیسے بالکل ٹھیک کہا کہ وہ مطلب ملٹی ڈائمینشنل ہے اس کے تانے بانے ایک طرف ساؤتھ ایشیا میں بھی ہیں ایک طرف انڈو پاک میں بھی ہیں اور پھر مڈل ایسٹ میں بھی ہیں افریقہ میں بھی اور یورپ میں بھی ہیں تو چائنا بیسکلی جو خود بھی وہ اس اسٹریٹجی کو جس طرح پرزینٹ کرتے ہیں کہ دس از دا ریوائول آف دا اولڈ سلک روٹ تو وہ جو ماضی کا وہ جو ایک تجارتی پورا ایک آپ کہہ لیں گے جو ایک نیٹ ورک یا ایک پورا ایک سسٹم تھا تو اس کی یہ ریوائول چاہ رہے ہیں یعنی کہ جو اکنامک پاور ہے وہ نظر آ رہی ہے کہ وہ اس کی گریوٹی امریکہ یورپ سے شفٹ ہو کے تو ایشیا میں آ رہی ہے اب دیکھیں یہ ایک بہت بڑی تھریٹ ہے اس کے لیے جو اس وقت لیڈنگ پوزیشن میں اور نمبر ون ہے تو اس تھریٹ کو اس نے ظاہر کاؤنٹر کرنا ہے اور ہمیں پتہ ہے کہ جو سوچ ایگزٹ کرتی ہے امریکہ اور یورپ کے اندر اس سوچ کے اندر فیشزم بھی ہے کیونکہ ہم نے ماضی میں پچھلے اگر دو ڈیکیڈز میں دیکھ لیں تو جس طرح سے انہوں نے بے دریغ طریقے سے ملکوں کے اوپر حملے کیے ہیں جنگوں کو اسٹارٹ کیا ہے اینڈ عراق وار از کلاسیکل یہ تو پیوٹن نے بھی اپنی اسپیچ میں کہا کہ یہ مذاق تھا کہ فالس انٹیلیجنس کے اوپر آپ نے ایک ملک کے اوپر انویٹ کر دیا ون ملین لوگوں کو مار دیا اور پھر کہا کہ جی غلطی ہو گئی بنتی ہے ویسے بھی چائنا اور رشیا کی کیونکہ دے بوتھ پرسیو ٹو ہیو اے کامن اینیمی تو ان کے ماضی میں جیسے بھی روابط رہے کبھی اچھے بھی رہے ہیں کبھی برے بھی رہے ہیں چائنا رشیا کے لیکن اب کیونکہ کامن اینیمی ہے تو اینیمی آف مائی اینیمی از مائی فرینڈ تو دے ہیو نیچرلی کم ٹوگیدر دنیا جب بنی تھی تو شروع شروع میں قبائل کا نظام تھا قبائل کا آپس میں اتحاد ہوتا تھا اور اس کے بعد ایک بڑا دشمن ہوتا تھا اس کے خلاف جنگیں ہوتی تھیں اب دنیا کے اندر خاص طور پہ جب سے یہ اربنائزیشن ہو گئی ہے شہری زندگی کا آغاز ہوا ہے تو اس میں ملک کے ملک آپس میں مل کے بلاکس بناتے ہیں right. اور خاص طور پہ ہم دیکھتے ہیں سیکنڈ ورلڈ وار جو ہوئی یعنی بٹوین فرسٹ ورلڈ وار اینڈ سیکنڈ ورلڈ وار تو بلاکس کا کانسیپٹ وہاں پہ دنیا کے پاس پہلی دفعہ آیا right. کچھ بلاکس بنے اور انہوں نے پھر اسٹریٹجیز بنائی اور پھر اس کے بعد یہ کہ یہ یو این بن گئی ہے اور یہ سارا انہیں بلاکس کے پھر نتیجے میں ہم افغانستان کی جو وار تھی جب رشیا نے انویٹ کیا جی اور اسی کو پھر آپ آگے نائن الیون اور اس سے پوسٹ نائن الیون جتنا بھی سنہریو تھا اب کچھ ایسا لگ رہا ہے کہ یہ جو بلاکس ہیں ان کی کچھ شفٹنگ ہونے جا رہی ہے اور اس میں وی بینگ پاکستان ہماری ہمیشہ سے ایک اسٹریٹجک امپورٹنس رہی ہے اچھا اب جو تھوڑا سا ڈفرینس کافی ایک سگنیفیکنٹ ڈفرینس نظر آ رہا ہے وہ یہ ہے کہ اور اکانمی از ان دا ورسٹ سینریو ناؤ آئی ول آسک مسٹر کیوان انور وے ڈو یو پلیس آور اوپینین اور آور کانٹیکس دیٹ وائی وی آر ڈوئنگ دس رائٹ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم تھینک یو اسد بھائی Uh, I think this program is important because this is not just another uh, talk show uh, or a podcast on uh, the Palestine or Gaza situation and what's happening uh, in uh, uh, Gaza by Israel. I think uh, where we are coming from or the angle that we would like to take is in context of how we see things uh, in light of uh, Quran and Ahadith. And uh, we would talk a lot about geopolitics in our program. But ultimately, it is important for our viewers to know that the, the angle and the context that we take is completely in light of uh, Quran and Hadith, and that is where we uh, take our guidance. But yet, uh, obviously, uh, there is observation and there are things that are happening on the ground. And uh, we would talk about things happening on the ground. And subsequently, we would talk about how things get connected to Uh, the Ahadi, especially in our next episode when we talk about uh, the, the future of this conflict. Yes, uh, and uh, uh, we f- firmly believe that Quran is the biggest or we can say it's the greatest breaking news and it, it does not only uh, guide us, it's not a book of knowledge only. Uh, it, it's a strategy book 
uh, of present and future as well. Yes. So uh, we very clearly mentioned in our episode that uh, uh, when you take the guidance from Quran, you are able to understand what's going on in in your scenario, in your surroundings, and what what will going to be happen in future as well. So, uh, in our opinion, we firmly believe that this is the missing link. Uh, this is not a regular news program in which you will get the information that uh, what's going on with the different uh, forces, strategy yes. forces and strategy players, but you will get a better idea, a deep down understanding. And uh, I think this is very clear. And uh, we also want our audience, our friends, to be uh, to become part of this. Why? So now let's come to the uh, uh, this event. Uh, let's start with Hamas attack. Uh, what do you think that uh, was it, was it a planned attack or uh, what? It seems to be an inside job in some people's opinion. So what do you think about it? Right, Asad Bhai. Uh, I think it's important to look at the circumstantial evidence uh, 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 look, when we look at this attack. Look, I think uh, we have to be pragmatic with the fact that we are talking about Hamas, which is an organization, uh, a small organization. No doubt, it is representing Gaza, but Gaza itself, if we would look at the geography, is only a forty-six kilometer by nine kilometer strip. Uh, jam packed with 2.3 million people but still a very small piece of land it is uh, smaller than the present day islamabad so if we look at that piece of land and we look at uh, israel on the other side which is the world's most advanced uh, and technologically superior uh, state with a standing army and with all the technological advancement in that context when we look at this attack things become very unusual i would say the circumstances surrounding this hamas attack should be questioned rationally first before we draw any other conclusions out of it look uh, we have to look at the situation on the ground as to how israel has planned to defend itself because hamas has been there for a very long time israel has always known and multiple times have gone into conflict with uh, hamas and in gaza where rockets have been fired skirmishes have happened they've tried to breach the borders so what has happened this time is extremely unusual now if we look at things from ground reality then we have to analyze how this border uh, has been developed or protected by israel look this is the world's most fortified and well guarded border now when you look at israel israel has the most superior technology in the world when it comes to intelligence gathering when it com- comes to interception of communication uh, satellite networks human intelligence uh, or any other technology which is used today uh, for defense purposes because it's the world's number one exporter of uh, defense uh, or intelligence gathering equipment in the world as well so now that technology and that state power is now focused on that 46 by 9 km piece of strip right then you have a border which is a live border so both parties know that there is a constant threat uh, this border the gaza israel border is a three layer border right three layers of defense and they have uh, uh, fiber optic human detection motion detection cameras vigilance backup forces Uh, in fact the backup or the response uh, the quick response force which is their regular military units is only 2 minutes uh, so the regular army is always on alert so now in that situation we are saying that hamas was able to breach the border break that fence the three layered security system with a tractor or with a bulldozer then there were fighters on bikes and paragliders very few paragliders maybe a dozen two dozen paragliders and rest on motorbikes entering into israel taking over 20 plus towns and massacring 1400 people and taking away 229 people as hostages and for 3 hours there was no israeli army there was no response yes the israeli military response came after 3 hours 
whereas this entire setup is on a 2 minute response yes. and they protocol. gave the explanation that the soldiers were on uh, the leave on actually. on leave or on holidays on an active border on an active border so uh, my point is that this itself is extremely abnormal and unusual and where i would like to leave it and kind of put in front of you is the scenario which was behind the 911 event in us the event happened the event was conducted by a few people from saudi arabia mainly or egypt right uh, it was accepted by al qaeda and then after that over a span of 20 years five muslim countries were destroyed starting from uh, afghanistan starting from afghanistan which had nothing to do with 911 then iraq then syria then libya and then through saudi the yemeni war so five muslim countries were destroyed millions of muslims were killed and the context was 9/11 uh, which is as unusual in our fata area as well in pakistan to uh, yes. 30 years yes we have suffered because of the war yes. in afghanistan but the circumstances behind 9/11 a few people took 6 month pilot training on cessna aircrafts hijacked the boeings did maneuvers that experienced pilots cannot do hit the two twin towers and also pentagon the world's most guarded military installation so they were able to do that so as unusual as it was 911 is the hamas attack so let's leave it there but okay. it is very unusual okay but uh, many people uh, like in the past they will put this in the conspiracy theorist uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, we don't want to comment on it so uh, Uh, coming to the reaction by the us and nato immediately they they uh, gave a very harsh reaction similar uh, to after they did in the 911 right the us sent their warship immediately and all the european uh, most of the european prime ministers they uh, visited israel for the solidarity so uh, uh, what do you say about this similar reaction Yes, uh, I mean uh, we have to look at the fact that as soon as the attack was launched by Hamas and fourteen uh, hundred uh, Israelis were killed. Though uh, in that context, we would say that what Hamas did uh, was not to be, uh, you know, appreciated in a sense that what they did it was obvious that there would be an action and a reaction. So what they did in context of uh, A, an activity or an action which a malaysia would do as per them a terrorist activity but for us they are freedom fighters so we would say a malaysia activity but it was understood that there would be a huge backlash but what is unusual is as soon as this happened the israeli backlash came and people are suffering even today people are suffering and may allah help them okay. but look at the us response to it immediately us moved two of its aircraft carriers and the formations to the mediterranean then uh, the british prime minister the french prime minister then envoys from rest of the europe started coming to israel uh, to show their support and solidarity so the us and the nato as i would like to put it this is us and nato giving a clear signals that we are ready if we look at the context then uh, as per them hamas is a terrorist organization so terrorists have struck so many countries in so many places this has never happened that other nations would get together and would start showing solidarity and aircraft carriers and formations would start yes. to move even us special forces and troops have started to land in israel exactly, exactly. so obviously somebody is planning something which they are not saying Yes. this move itself makes it very unusual exactly i was that why the over response you know i was com- coming to uh, this point that uh, who is the real beneficiary of this uh, whole war scenario and what is the real game in your opinion right i so, i think this is where we need to open up the old discussion uh, the discussion of block politics yes we have spoken as you have said and we have shown the clip that this is actually a war or a fight between the two blocks we must look at the context in which uh, russia ukraine war started 
anyone who believes that it was Russia invading in 2022, uh, then they don't know history. Actually, it was forced to yes, dragged exactly in this war. Russia was forced into this war. Russia never wanted this war. It was Ukraine who have been instigating since 2014. And Russia has been warning that this is my red line. Do not cross. And the warning, why the warning? Because Russia could see US and NATO coming right at its borders, putting missile and defense systems, which would incapacitate Russia to respond in any future event. Now, this is a breach of contract between NATO and Russia, where NATO was supposed to be dissolved. Correct. And the Americans guaranteed that there is no use of NATO or no need of NATO after Cold War. Hence, the the Russian states or the USSR broke off and the military hostility was supposed to go down, the disarmament and everything. But the US and the NATO never stopped that. And they instigated and there was a military coup. Uh, anyone sh- in who the is Ukraine. interested, yes, yeah. should read the history. That events uh, preceding 2014 up to 2022, before Russian invasion, what has really happened? So this was instigated the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Similarly, in our opinion, uh, this is another front of that proxy war which started in 2022. So when Russia-Ukraine war started, we did that two episodes and we spoke about block politics. So actually the fight is between the China and and, and the U.S. bloc. The world is getting divided. U.S. is not the sole superpower anymore. The power is now being challenged by China. And the first proxy war was the Russia-Ukraine conflict. People said the Russian war or this conflict, Russia would not be able to sustain because of its economic weakness. And the war would end in one month or at the most two months. These are some of the top defense analysts speaking on CNN and BBC. And it is now, it is one year and eight months since the Russia-Ukraine conflict started and the war has not stopped. Russia is fighting it. So obviously, who is supporting it? It is the China bloc who is fighting. This conflict has full potential to be another proxy war of the same bloc fight, the US-China bloc fight. This is what our opinion is. Uh, If you will not label me... Again, in the conspiracy theorist, right? <laughs> Let me allow. Uh, because uh, you talked about the Ukraine uh, coup in 2014 around. So, if we see the uh, scenario of the world in the same era, the change of government in Pakistan, in India, and even in England as well. So it's it seems that something is going on after this 2010 scenario, right? Uh, and between 2010, 2011, and 2022 and 23, this is a very important period. I must say, uh, maybe a next episode of 9/11 or or what is their plan to do? So now let's come again to our discussion of this uh, current war of Gaza. Uh, what are the objectives of this war? Uh, what do you think that who who is the beneficiary and what is the can what can be the exact objective? Right. Who is getting out of it? Right. Uh, so we, before we talk about objectives, let me just put some light on the parallels of uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict to yes. this one. Look, the war has uh, or the fight has started by Hamas attacking and Israel responding. Now, what will happen? The potential is that as Israel responds, and the response is totally out of context. As per them, there is a terrorist organization, and Israel is a standing army and a state, uh, which is under UN Charter and UN obligation. A terrorist organization is not under UN Charter. Yet, the response is that when Hamas has a terrorist organization, as per them, we call them freedom fighters, As per them, a terrorist organization attacked and the response is, let's kill all the population. Yes. Now, where is the UN Charter? Does this signify a state or a a standing army? Where is Geneva Convention? And nobody is bothered, neither US nor Europe, because they are all standing behind Israel to do the genocide. Exactly. So, firstly, uh, this is what is happening. Uh, A state versus a terrorist organization And the state has now decided to punish the entire population because of what a terrorist organization did. Exactly. So this is one point to look at. Secondly, 
the way they are doing it and as they go on with the ethnic cleansing obviously a response would come like russia was pushed to finally enter the war instigation started in 2014 russia ultimately invaded in 2022 when there was no other choice left it seems that now similar situation is repeating as israel would be ruthless to the palestinians sooner or later hezbollah would respond then syria would respond and then finally iran would be dragged in the war and when iran gets dragged obviously behind iran would be russia and behind russia as we know is china so the entire block would be dragged into this fight and in our opinion it is the us who wants to drag iran and the china block into this conflict and this is where the objectivity yes because the us us economy is sinking their dollar is uh, in the problem because yes. uh, uh, the the petro dollar payments are also being shifted to other currencies especially the chinese and russians even pakistan a small country they started taking the uh, oil in uh, russian currency or uh, in even chinese currency so uh, this is very very important like uh, U- us has a very uh, big war industry as well and uh, since they are the world power they came into the power uh, they have uh, constant wars so it is their need i think you have actually pointed towards a very important uh, aspect which is uh, why would us do this yes exactly why do they want a war the reason as you have said uh, there has been development in this region it is important to understand those developments to look at or understand the bigger picture uh, we we have heard in the last one year or so that saudi has threatened multiple times that it is planning to shift oil payments from us dollar to a basket of currencies yes and when saudi is making this statement we are saying that opec is going to shift the methodology of oil payment okay the concept as you referred uh, the petro dollar is what is sustaining us economy and us dollar at the moment because we know what has happened to us economy over these 20 years of wars that has that has been going on uh, and us is the most indebted country in the world at the moment correct so this is a huge threat and when we talk about opec opec uh, the key countries in opec are saudi arabia iran iraq venezuela Russia Russia is not an OPEC member but still uh, is an oil producer so if you look at the bigger picture most of the oil would actually go in the hands of the China bloc if this moves happen also not forgetting that recently China has been brokering a friendship deal between Iran and Saudi Arabia Saudi Arabia exactly America has always created this conflict where Iran and Saudi Arabia has been on the opposing side so they can divide and rule China wanted settlement in this region. So Saudi was uh, in or uh, going towards the China camp. Iran was already part of the China camp. What people do not know is that Iran was also brokering and Israel was uh, very tilted towards China to broker the Israeli Saudi friendship deal. And America was not happy about it. Okay. So what was effectively happening was this region was going out of the American control and into the Chinese control. Okay, okay. This is where block fight comes in or the block okay, politics okay. comes in. America was threatened for two reasons. One, it is the status of superpower that was being challenged by China in this region because America was being pushed out and secondly, uh, the petrodollar. Both of them uh both of these scenarios are not acceptable to America yes. as the superpower. and america wanted china to be pushed out and what has happened this conflict has actually created a scenario where where china would be pushed out okay uh, uh, we will discuss uh, how th- that is uh, but this is apparently what is so going so you on. are saying that the the us america they became desperate after they see that uh, uh, israel is going towards the china and uh, it's closing their ties with the chinese government so they became desperate and showed immediately their help in this scenario of uh, hamas attack yes if if you if you look at the scenario uh, what does america gain out of it when hamas attacked and israel is under threat 
uh, obviously israel has to go back to america to seek help because without america israel doesn't really stand much ground so this attack instigated the scenario where israel called for america and america again came into the limelight and in the show as the the muscle man so immediately if you would look at the response america did not take long before it started to move its aircraft carriers its ground troops uh, europeans started to come in and they said israel don't worry punish them we are with you and they started supplying them weapons as well so that is that is one observation in this context that america jumped in so they secured israel the old ally also when this environment would get further charged up and uh, when more players would start to jump in look we have to remember that saudi arabia and the rest of the countries in the region like uae uh, qatar they are traditional american allies china is only the new player in the game right okay. so as these countries were moving towards china you create an explosive situation where they would jump back to the old guard you know exactly. so if there is a regional war america would come in and give them the same choice especially saudi arabia as was given to pakistan mm. either you are with us or against us or against. now we know the ruling regimes are dependent on us foreign policy so there is a huge chance that they would fall into the us camp when they have to make a decision if that happens then on one side the war would expand and the players would be as we said hamas hezbollah through lebanon hezbollah through syria then iraq and then iran and russia and china this is the block which we are looking at but where are the us bases the us bases are in saudi arabia in qatar, qatar in oman in uae and that is where the fight will get engaged so when iran or that block will respond where would they respond would they shoot their missiles to america which is too far away and they do not have the missiles to reach america or would they fire their missiles on the bases in these countries in these countries exactly so huge risk and we will talk about risks huge risk of a shia sunni conflict in this region but if the saudis do not go into the american camp then they become the enemy so they would be then on the firing line so the situation is explosive and explosive, america yes. has reinstated its at least for the time being its superpower position and secured the petro dollar because nobody will now think at least for the time being about other ideas like uh, shifting the currency from dollar or uh, let china come into the region and build its influence the whole game and the scenario has changed and this is where us benefits and remember uh, us has always benefited from war economy be it world war 1 be it world war 2 or subsequent events either the vietnam war or the korean war or the afghan war us has, has always benefited from war economy whenever us economy is about to sink or in crisis a global military crisis would happen would happen history is yes you know so uh, uh, you talked about risk so uh, how do you see the chances of this world war 3 uh, clouds are now in the skies very clearly can be seen that both blocks uh, are directly or indirectly engaged and then we will talk about this uh, indian pakistan scenario but first uh, what is your opinion about this world war 3 right chance right uh, asad bhai when we say world war 3 which means multiple fronts globally get opened up because of a conflict now when we spoke about block politics we actually said that the world is going into world war 3 and we spoke about that this is only the first front of the proxy war which has started and i think history has proven itself that after one and a half year the suspected next front which we thought would be middle east has actually opened up Correct. so when we talk about world war 3 uh we are talking about uh, the the blocks where there is a us block and a china block so multiple countries would get into fight as we are seeing in the middle east where multiple countries would get engaged now 
equal risks exist that there would be other fronts which which would open up and when we did that program one and a half year back we said that there are two possibly three fronts in addition to the russia ukraine front one is the middle eastern front where there would be a us block versus the china, china block, block. Yes. and iran being the target and the other front would be the pakistan india front and the third would be a front in south asia either it could be taiwan or it could be north south korea china sea south china sea so uh, these three fronts we suspected the next most likely front is pakistan india mm. for multiple reasons look when this event has happened uh, and there would be uh, a huge backlash can israel afford a nuclear pakistan to be present and a threat hmm. so for them it is very important to engage pakistan with india so that they do not have the capacity to look at middle east okay so the, these both fronts can can be opened at the same time as well yes they they uh, our both borders of eastern border and be western border from yes. a strategic point of view they cannot let pakistan lose and create a big crisis in the middle east because remember we are talking about masjid e aqsa battle muqaddas that is very sensitive to all muslims exactly. we are talking about makkah and madina extremely sensitive so anything that is happening in that region has a potential to draw in any f- muslim forces anywhere in the world even if we don't seem to be uh, uh, very supportive uh, in umma's cause uh, these are flash points exactly and also not forgetting that though we have spoken this earlier that pakistan uh, might not be in any camp you know but realistically speaking pakistan is in the in the chinese camp we don't accept it but remember all our military hardware over the past 30 years has gradually shifted from us and yes. european to chinese yes our army our air force our navy, navy has yes. completely shifted to chinese our economic dependence is now moving from us and europe towards china the region and exactly. cpec plays exactly. such a huge role exactly. then look at local politics uh, what has happened in the last 4 5 years there was a regime and a plan to get pakistan to default uh, thank god that did not happen and uh, we uh, things are turning around and now uh, the new player who has entered the scenario Nawaz Sharif coming back to Pakistan China man is the China man is the old China man yes is the old China man so uh, Pakistan even if we don't accept it is in the Chinese block so it is very important to take care of Pakistan before anything big happens in the middle east so whoever has done the homework and US as we know do uh, they have a lot of think tanks who would plan ahead uh, it is very clear and obvious that they have planned about Pakistan before they started the middle eastern front and uh, our scenario is very simple it's the india indian yeah, front yeah. so that would potentially open up this is what we think uh, is quite possible okay so now let's conclude our discussion uh, um, this world war 3 is uh, it seems to be started and all the blocks have been now engaged and uh, all the economies especially uh, the big economies are also on the stake at the moment so we being muslim uh, if we see the whole scenario is there any uh, ray of hope or do you see uh, any light uh, in the tunnel because uh, uh, on ground what we are saying that uh, the missiles uh, and bombs are coming and even hospitals and schools and uh, the homes are uh, not safe and the situation seems to on ground the situation the current uh, situation seems to be terrible mm-hmm. and there is no voice Right. So uh, as we said in the start that uh, this is not a news program or analysis program right uh, there is actually a vision behind it and, uh, and uh, it's a common it's a greater cause uh, that uh, we, we are here to understand the whole sun- scenario in the light of uh, Quran and sunna so how do you see the future right right uh, asad bhai uh, a lot of people and a lot of professionals in pakistan are looking at this conflict in context of an terrorist organization attacked a big power and the big power is now responding ruthlessly and they think that they will uh, be ruthless uh, 
they will teach them a good lesson and then everything will simmer down for them it's a newton's law of uh, action reaction action reaction okay but uh, the context that we have taken right though in this episode we have spoken about what is happening on the ground which is how this war has started but how this would end is a very different context this is how the war has started but this is not how the, the war would end and the only way we could forecast or foresee how the war would end is through quran and hadith because that is where a lot of information and details are present and that is the most solid and concrete way where we can forecast events because allah subhanahu wa taala has given us direction right and the reason for doing this program is exactly the same when we say that this war can expand and multiple fronts can open up including pakistan then we at the back of our mind uh, the context is quran and hadith and when we talk in the next program about what is going to happen in the future then that would purely be based on what we have been told uh, in hadith in quran and the guidance that allah subhanahu wa taala has given us this is exactly what we want people to understand that we are not uh, just uh, some analysts or geopolitical strategist who are giving their own theories the reason we are why we are doing this program is because there is guidance given by allah subhanahu wa taala complete guidance yes. we should own it we should accept it and we should strategize strategize because yes. it is for our own benefit if muslims and this uh, ummah would not benefit from that guidance then we would be at loss events would materialize as we have been told so uh, it is in our interest to understand what is the context what is happening and where we are heading but this episode is is about how the war has started and the potential for this war to grow and the threat that pakistan has especially because uh, there is a serious threat that pakistan would get engaged Uh, it is not difficult for enemy to create false flag operations like what 9/11 did pulwama like what, uh, pulwama Local. what yes. happened with hamas yes. uh, any rogue mm-hmm. element supported by establishment within the the victim country like israel facilitated i would say yeah this hamas attack may be instigated maybe uh, they were helping them to get to this point that uh, the event happened something similar can happen in india a false flag attack a black swan and india can get engaged with pakistan so there is a good chance of that so we are alerting and we are trying to give direction to people in power that please get prepared and in the next episode we will talk about uh, how the future uh, would materialize uh, based on the directions given one last thing is uh, uh, we are very disappointed to see the reaction of pakistan government that especially in punjab they are doing this music festival for 10 days in this scenario right when your brothers and sisters uh, they are giving their innocent blood every day and uh, you are just uh, doing your cultural and musical uh, concert and uh, this festival uh, so this is very disappointing Uh, overall because uh, i think if uh, we see pakistan as an important place uh, within the umma so there should be a mature response by the people who are in government either is it's a caretaker government or it's a political government uh, but there should be a, a mature response asad bhai this is in fact it is extremely shameful exactly uh, of what we are doing and equally shameful is our response to the israeli uh, uh, hamas or gaza conflict uh, but then again uh, this is why we are doing this program uh, we are trying to alert and we are trying to make people understand that there is much bigger context to what you just see in gaza uh, people in our power uh, if they have faith and iman Uh, they should open their eyes if not then uh, allah's justice is subtle and ruthless exactly. and our enemy is also much bigger uh, much economically stronger and in a much bigger number so if we are sensible we should take direction from what allah subhanahu wa taala has told us but if we would do musical events and concerts 
then israel was also doing a musical concert <laughs> when the the paratroopers the came the paratroopers and came and what happened exactly. so uh, good luck to our musical event but uh, let's pray that uh, allah give them guidance Ameen. and they should uh, you know play their role uh, and get ready for what's uh, coming ahead okay so uh, we will end our program uh, based on your uh, last pray that uh, may allah give guidance to all of us uh, in this situation especially and uh, we have a firm belief that uh, everybody is planning you are planning i am planning and the the countries present in the blocks worldwide blocks they are also planning but the biggest planning has been made by allah subhanahu wa taala and uh, we should be very sure uh, and we should have a very firm belief that uh, his planning will be successful in the end inshallah so do give us your comments and feedback uh, of our program and as uh, kevan bhai said that uh, in the next episode we will come with the uh, reference of quran and hadith about these end times and uh, we will uh, try to bridge this gap uh, and fill in this gap uh, to understand the present situation and foresee the future inshallah take care uh, and see you inshallah next episode assalamu alaikum